see-through blouse. Sophie T. Remember, love, the meek may inherit the earth, but they won't enjoy it. <laughs> if I don't rest these weary bones, I was so embarrassed that woman looked exactly like Mrs. Simmons from Omaha. You think I really should have bought that cardigan, Elizabeth? Oh, it would look charming on you. Really? Good afternoon, ladies. It's so nice to see you again. Three beers for my cohorts and a double old-fashioned for me. I'm driving. <laughs> it just wouldn't be Tuesday if you didn't come in, Miss Curtis. How's your mother, Trudy? Oh, wasting away to nothing. But the doctor says she's going to be okay. Poor dear. We all have our troubles. Uh, guess what the special is for today? Salmon aspic. Tomato surprise. Yuck. Two coffees and two hot teas. I'd rather the double old-fashioned. <laughs> the poor dear's mother is going to outlive us all. How was your turkey sandwich last time, Shelby? Oh, I'm thinking about having it again. Are you going to tell us soon whether or not you got it, Sophie T., or am I going to have... When I say I'll do something, I do it. How? Got what? The application for the computer dating club. I just walked in and asked for it. I swear I completely slipped my mind. I finally talked her out of putting her own name on it. Are we really going to send it in? Of course. How would we get any answers if we didn't? And wait till you hear some of the questions. This is so exciting. Uh, do you believe in intimate contact before marriage? The answers are yes, no, and depends on the circumstances. I think depends on the circumstances. You don't. Oh, not me personally, dear. The girl we're making up is going to join this silly thing. Well, depending on the circumstances means the same as yes, Sophie T. Well, since she's never going to have to do anything about it, we can make her a swinger if we want to. I'm sorry, Miss Saunders, but we're all out of that turkey you like. Oh, well, I'll have the cream cheese on date nut bread then. What about you, Evelyn? There's always the tomato surprise. I'll take the diet plate. Miss Gibson? Oh, uh, my usual salad bowl, Trudy. Crab cakes. Thank you, ladies. Now, back to our swinger. Is it important to you that your date share your attitudes about sex? Answers, yes, no, moderately. In deference to you, Shelby, we'll mark moderately. Are all the questions on that paper that intimate? Oh, of course not. I'm just picking out the good ones for now. What's the name of the girl who's supposed to be doing this thing? Rebecca Mead. There isn't a single solitary Rebecca Mead in Pasadena or in any of the surrounding towns. Is that what you were doing with those phone books, Sophie? Well, we couldn't very well give her the name of a real person. And Aunt Becky would be so happy if she knew we remembered her. And she was just as zany as you are. <laughs> this is much more fun than when we registered for the draft. You suggested that one. I know I did. What's next, Sophie T? They want to know her age. Oh, uh, 23 is a nice age for a girl. 
23. Just old enough, but not too old. Just old enough, but not too old for what, Sophie T? I'm too old to remember. Oh, you're no such thing. Well, anyhow, the next thing they want to know is permanent address or temporary address, if any. I think we ought to make her an out-of-town girl staying with a relative here. Oh, you and Evelyn are the only ones with no husbands to explain to. I can just imagine myself trying to account to Harry for telephone calls and mail arriving from attractive young men at all hours of the day and night. We won't mind. You won't. But I certainly don't look forward to being in the tub and having to get out to answer the phone for Rebecca Mead. Well, we just put down no phone. Oh, everybody has a phone. Not at a temporary address, they don't. Well, anyway, I'll fill that part in later. Now, let's see, what, uh, what, are the, what does she look like? Height, five feet seven. That's nice height for a girl. Five feet seven. Weight, 240 pounds. She's not twins, Elizabeth. Would you settle for 125 pounds? If I have to. Eyes, blue. She has to have blue eyes and blonde hair. If she only has one pretend life, let her live it as a blonde. Now, the next thing they want to know is her occupation. Swinger. That's a hobby, not an occupation. If it's an occupation, you call it... <gasps> Sweet tea. Here comes the lunch. Oh, I'm famished. <sighs> you know, I really would like to see me in a pair of those hot pants. You wouldn't. I'm not much at making old-fashioned, so if they're wrong, you'll have to wait until Sophie gets down. Sophie T, the girls are all here. How are they? Oh, mm, delicious. Mm. Hi. Oh, Sophie, Sophie T, go, baby, go. go. Well, it's still a skirt. Oh, wait till you hear what happened to Rebecca Mead. Oh, I know her. That's the girl that we made up for that computer dating thing. Oh. Where's my drink, sissy? I'll get it. You, you know, I sent that form in, and it wasn't three days till I had an answer, and they sent me a list of five names and addresses, all within 30 miles of here. They did <laughs> Yes, and they told me that my name, I mean Rebecca's name, had been sent to the five men whose names were on my list, and if they didn't work out, they'd send me five more. Sounds almost indecent. Try these. If they don't fit, We'll send you another batch. Sound indecent, it is. Did you get any letters? I got two. One yesterday and one today. Those are letters? Yes. Uh, dear Miss Mead, my list from Scientific Associates came, and out of the names on it... Hmm, you're turning into a good bartender, sissy. <laughs> Yours was the only one without a phone number, which makes you the woman of mystery I'd naturally want to contact first. <laughs> About myself. I'm a research chemist with a Northern Virginia firm. I grew up in Lansing, Michigan, and attended the University of Michigan. I've been living in this area for about two years now, and am presently taking a couple of graduate courses at the California Institute of Technology. Oh, anybody can tell he's not a Pasadenian. Nobody calls Caltech anything but Caltech. He said he was from Michigan. Go on, Sophie. I'd like to get together with you soon. Perhaps we could make it a dinner date? If you're right, or better yet, give me a ring. We'll see if we can't fix something up. I look forward to meeting you. Best regards, Franklin L. Colby. He sounds like a very good prospect. Research chemists must make a bundle these days. Which makes one wonder why he needs to seek companionship through a computer. Maybe he's shy. And maybe he's somewhat peculiar. Honestly, Shelby, sometimes you'd make a person think you could see a lecherous look in Lincoln's eye on a five-dollar bill. Well, one doesn't know what the artist had in mind when he made that engraving. I wish I felt the same way you do, Shelby. Never a dull moment. Something racy going on wherever you look. I'm not licentious. Just cautious. Could I have another little... Oh, yes. You're at home in our home, dear. Make whatever you want. Can I fix anything for anybody else while I'm mixing? Just come on back so we can hear the other letter. I wonder what it would be like if, say, we were girls and this computer dating business was going on. Daddy would never have allowed it. 
Wouldn't allow me to smoke, and I did. One cigar behind the spring house is a little different than putting your name on a public dating list. Come on, girls, now. Here's the second one. This one's short. Hi, Becky. I'm a lousy letter writer, so don't expect much. By the way, what do you use? Carrier pigeons instead of a phone? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see by my address that we live very close by each other, so why not take advantage, right? Give me a ring and we'll get together for a drink or something. Joe Sandell. P.S. There's a P.S. Don't dye your hair. I really dig blue-eyed blondes. Oh, he's a smart aleck. His handwriting's terrible. Look. What does he do for a living? He doesn't say. I bet he's short. Where's those elevator shoes? <laughs> I wouldn't care if he were six feet tall and rich as Croesus. A smart aleck is still a smart aleck. I wouldn't trust him in a public bus. Well, Becky will answer rather curtly and put an end to the correspondence right there. You aren't going to answer. Well, my dear, we have to do something. Those letters could come on forever. It's a pity to do that to Franklin. Well, we'll just write both of them and say that uh, Becky became engaged and she's gone off to Timbuktu or someplace to join her fiancé. Nobody will believe that. Why not just say her plans changed and she went back to Minneapolis? She comes from Omaha. All right, Omaha, but wherever. She went home. The end. That's simple and convincing. Well, the next batch of letters have to be better than these. Oh, it isn't as much fun as I thought it would be. You always say that, and then you have more stories to tell people. Oh, all I meant was, well... Don't young men write poetry to a young lady nowadays? I like the image of her flying off to Timbuktu or someplace to meet an archaeologist or something. How about the image of some cards at the bridge table? I feel lucky. Anybody feel like a fresh drink? No, I still have half. Well, I'll, I'll brew up a batch. You all go to the bridge table. I'll bring them. My husband would never believe that we sent him for this computer thing. He thinks I'm so stodgy. My husband hates computers. He says the Democrats invented them to destroy the Republican Party. Really? He says anything counts that fast, looks that slick, has to be a Democrat. <laughs> Deal. Please let me go. No! Shelby, 14 cents. It's impossible. That's Harry. Here. Harry will say to me, you're tight, Elizabeth. 
and I will say, yes I am. Then he will say, put your head back, honey, and I will. Then he will roll down his window so I can get some air. Then I will get very sick to my stomach. I really think it's eating the orange slice that does it. That's what makes me sick. We always say that, and then you make yourself a drink and you put on another orange slice. It's eating the orange slice. It's citrus. I, I, I think I'm allergic to citrus. Ever since I got that terrible sunburn down at Palm Springs. No, dear. Huh? Drive home careful now. Night. Night's open. Mm. company started putting their warehousing and sales and payroll records on one of those computer things. I thought he'd have a stroke. You know what he does when we get a bill from someplace and there's one of those computer cards in it? First, he folds it. And then... Dear Miss Me, I got your name and address from Scientific Associates. Dear Rebecca, dear Rebecca, let's take a summer together. <laughs> dear Miss Me, I got your name from my list from scientific associates going to be a lovely day. Wonderful. Feeling all right, Missy? Terrific. There's a letter here from Evelyn Jr., one from the Martins, and here's one for Rebecca Mead. Whoopi. You didn't look or sound tiddly last night. I ate some of Elizabeth's orange slice. The coffee's ready. Can I poach you an egg or something? I'd rather die. Really, I'd rather die. Would you like to see the letter for Rebecca Mead? That might cheer you up. Why don't you read it to me, hmm? Just sip your coffee and you'll feel fine and dandy. Now, dear Miss Mead, I have your name on my list from Scientific Associates. I'd very much like to meet you. I notice you have no phone and would therefore suggest that you could call me. My phone number is 7931299. Or if you prefer to correspond by mail at first, my address is 2769 Kenmore, apartment 12. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Best regards, Malcolm Weston. Sounds like an accountant. Certainly sounds businessy. The more we hear from Rebecca's suitors, the more I'm glad I'm not a young girl on the loose anymore. Smart Alex, dull accountant types. It was Franklin. He sounds nice enough. Why don't we call him up and have lunch with him? Franklin, I mean. See what he's really like, huh? Couldn't do that. It wouldn't be fair. And besides, what could we use as an explanation as to why we were calling him? We could say that we're Rebecca's old maid aunts 
who stick their noses in all Becky's business. Two little old biddies. Oh. I thought you were serious. You're not serious, are you? Can't just lay dead and wait for to answer my letter. Chick must move a lot. Guy needs those kind of clothes, got nothing inside. She wouldn't like that. Guy, wild clothes like that. She's got no phone. She must move around a lot. Kind of digs a guy who comes on not too strong, just cool. Yeah, cool. Digs guys with some class. One step ahead of her all the time. Be a break if Rebecca has a little bread. That's a big plus, yeah. To have a chick with money makes everything so easy. Kind of chick doesn't have a phone. Weird, maybe. Yeah. Maybe she's a weird chick. Could be. Sure. She could be. And it's a gamble. Always a gamble. A chick will be weird. Now it's worth a couple of bucks. Buy a bunch of flowers. Drive out to her place. She comes to the door. Yeah. Chicks take that. How goes with the book writing, Mal? Great, great. I got two publishers fighting over it. Then I guess you won't sell the movie rights to that guy from studio. Oh, not yet. Pink. Pink goes good with blondes. Yeah, maybe. Red and white. No, it's too flashy. She'll think I'm on a hustle. You're not? Dumb looking flowers. No bachelor buttons. Could be a funny peasant from a bachelor who takes you. Got no bachelor buttons. Well, that's okay. Be a wrong move anyway. Too obvious. Yeah, bad scene. What do you got that's cheap? Spring flowers? Yeah, yeah. Give me two bunches of those and look like I spent a lot of bread. <laughs> That'll turn around. Two bucks and I come off heavy. Yeah. I'll take a quick shower. Put on a little of that aftershave. Lemon. I'll smell good. Drive out to Pasadena. Knock on a door. No. Maybe I'll sit in the car and wait for him to come home. Yeah. I'll wait. She comes down the street, 5'7", blonde, blue eyes, 23, great figure. Yeah, I'd know her anywhere. Hi, Rebecca, these are for you. I'm Mal Weston. Zap, right out of her mind. Right out of her mind. looks like money. She's probably staying with an aunt or a grandmother or something. Maybe a relative with a lot of heavy bread. 23. Probably taking some grad courses. Where is she? Out with some relatives? Uh, screw me up if she comes home with them. Blow my bit. Maybe a date. Some guy from the university. No, oh, it's not her style. She wouldn't have laid out five bucks for the computer service. No. No, she's the kind of chick who calls her own shots.
probably. She's not with him. She'll have to come home alone. Maybe with some punk. Maybe she works nights. Old chicks going to bed. Wait. It's ten now. Makes me look anxious if I wait any longer. Turn her off before I can turn her on. I can get the phone number. Call her. Wouldn't have this hassle if she would have come home. Two bucks down the train. Not having a ball when I sat there like a jackass. Sat and waited like some dumb. Sat there and waited like some jackass. Waited. Waited. Living in a tomb. Nobody's saying nothing. Buddy. Don't pry it. Was she? Operator, may I help you? Uh, operator, this is Dr. Weston. Uh, I've just received an emergency call and all the party left was their, was their address. And I, I need the party's name and the phone number for the ambulance. May I ring you back on your office phone, Doctor? Operator, the patient has just had a massive heart seizure. Now, I'm not in my office. This is an emergency. What is that address, Doctor? 406 South Rutherford Street in Pasadena. One moment, please. in the name of Sophie Tate Curtis, and the number is 792-1099. 792-1099. Thank you very much, Operator. And I tried to find another hat that would look good with this dress, but here I am in a Breton again. I suppose it really is my trademark. Shelby is never this late. We're going to miss our table at the Tivoli. Well, we only have three choices. One, we wait. Two, we go on without her. And three... That must be her calling us now. Now, don't scold her, Missy. Hello? Uh, this is Mal Weston. Uh, I'd like to speak to Miss Mead, if I may. Uh, this is Rebecca Mead speaking. Well, I subscribe to the computer dating service you belong to, Scientific Associates. Well, I hope you don't mind, but I tracked your address down. That's how I got your phone number. Uh, could, could, could you wait just a moment, Mr. Weston? What's wrong with telling him on the phone what we're going to put in a letter for Pete's sake? How did he get our number? He explained that, and I'll tell you later. Now, may I return to this conversation without further harassment? No, you may not, Missy. You may hang up that phone and be done with it. You are not Rebecca Mead. She is 23. He can't see me on the phone, so how can he know how old I am? Oh, let her talk to him, Evelyn. Stop acting like an old poot. Mr. Weston? I hope I'm not causing you a problem by calling. I, I wrote to you. Mm -mm, yes, I had your letter. I was just about to sit down to answer it. Well, why, don't you, why don't you answer it in person? Look, I'm going to be in, in your neighborhood later. Why don't we have, have a drink someplace? You know, have a drink together. I couldn't do that. Um, you see, I became engaged soon after I sent in that computer form, and I'm leaving for Hawaii to meet my fiancé in the next day or two. We decided that was too complicated a story to tell. Well, I'm only telling it to this one, and he seemed to believe it. I excuse me, uh, uh, there was a noise here, Mr. Weston. Would you repeat that, please? I said I'm sure your fiancé wouldn't mind if you and I had a drink together. Oh, that's because you don't know my fiancé. Then let's not tell him. Oh, I couldn't do that. I think you'd really like to. I tell you what, there's a there's a nice cocktail lounge in Pasadena, the, the Velvet Trap. It's just off Colorado on post. Now, I'll be there at, oh, 5.30. Oh, I'm certainly flattered, but I... You won't have any trouble picking me out. I'm, I'm six feet two, I weigh 195 pounds, and I'll, I'll have on the... No, I, I really couldn't possibly, Mr. Weston. Yes, you can, and I'm sure you will. Now, look, it's only one friendly hello and goodbye drink. I'll be there at 5.30. 
You'll be there. Yes, you will. And he poured on the old snake oil so thick. But he seemed nice enough anyhow. Persistent but polite. Shelby, my love, where are you? Well, never mind. You have to meet us at Colorado and Post Street. Are you going? You're not going. Yeah, right away. Of course not. Even in a dark cocktail lounge, I could never pass for 23. 30, maybe. found Sophie T's telephone number and, and called Rebecca Mead there. He said he wanted to meet her. Shelby, you'll never know what you miss. Honestly, you'll never. Oh, it's all that new hairdresser's fault. Mr. Frederick, he takes forever. What happened to Lucille? Oh, she went back to giving pedicures. I kind of like what he did, but in back. You look as pretty yeah. as a picture, Shelby. Is that a new dress? Yes. Hello, love. Did you hear about our phone call? Which phone call? There's a young man coming to that cocktail lounge right down there at 5.30, hoping he's convinced our Rebecca Mead to join him. But she can't. There is no Rebecca Mead. Sophie talked to him and told him she was engaged and couldn't come. But he wouldn't take no. Who wouldn't? Malcolm. He said he'd come over from wherever he was and, and wait for her. And so we decided to come and see what he looks like. Sophie T and Elizabeth decided. And I didn't think the pair of them were safe on the street without a keeper is the actual truth of the matter. What are we going to say to him? Nothing, just look. But when he asks us where Rebecca Mead is. Now why would a young man waiting for a girl in her early 20s ask us anything at all? <laughs> well, the way things have been going for me this week, nothing would surprise me. You know I found three cracked eggs in the carton the milkman left for me this morning. Oh, that's terrible. We'd like a table, please. A little away from the entrance, but not too far out of the way. We're very nosy. Please, this way. We'd like four old fashions, please. I don't think he's here yet. What does he look like? He's six feet, two inches tall, and he weighs 195 pounds. Evelyn kept telling me to hang up, so I didn't hear the rest of his description if he gave one. What'll we do when he gets here? Just look. And don't you get any ideas about going over to him or asking him to join us, Missy. been born who could stand up Rebecca Mead. You're right. There he is. He looks like a martini drinker to me. Mm, certainly hope not. You're about to eat your orange slice, Elizabeth, and you know you're allergic. I know. But this is the best part. Well, you're over 21. I wonder what he'll do when Rebecca doesn't come. You're 
wrong, Sophie, dear. He's having a Collins. He's also paying a great deal of attention to that little waitress for a man who's waiting for Rebecca Mead. My sister was courted by a boy that looked like him. He was in peanuts. Good heavens! I'll bet he thinks that's Rebecca. I've been waiting for you. I'm Mal Wesson. Do you mind if I sit down? Maybe we can have that drink. Well, I have an appointment at 6.30. I hope I can make you miss it. How about a drink? We won't have enough time if we have a drink here. We can have a drink anywhere you like. That wasn't our Malcolm Weston at all. He was too thin. And she was too heavy to ever be Rebecca. Well, but no matter who the man was or who the woman was, what do we do now? I think it was him. I suppose we could order another drink and see if somebody else comes in that might be Malcolm Weston. What time is it? It's quarter to six. I can make it if we don't do it. Waitress. I put a roast in before I left. Have you seen those new electronic ovens that bake a potato in five minutes? No. It's really a nice place you have here. You in the real estate business? You've got a lot of interesting things here. Twenty dollars, honey. In advance. Twenty dollars? Twenty dollars in advance, Mal. Trap. Well, I've been called worse. I wouldn't give you twenty nickels. Well, you're one of those, huh? I'm not one of anything. Well, it's been nice meeting you. Now, if you don't mind letting yourself out, I've got an appointment. Wait a minute. Do you know what I did last night? Do you know what an idiot you made of me? Well, let me tell you, Rebecca. I sat in front of your aunt's house, I had two bunches of flowers, and I waited for you to come home. Does that give you a laugh? Well, I don't think it's so funny. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, don't con me. I was there. Uh, listen, I think you'd better go outside and get a little air. Take your hands off me, you fake. Maybe you could pull that $20 routine on the suckers that believe that fiancé in Hawaii bull, but not me. I'm gonna call the police. I'm gonna call the police. Go of me! What do you think you're doing? Marie? Oh, well, oh, dress. If that young man wasn't Malcolm Weston, then I don't understand why he didn't come. He was so positive about being there. Maybe he's shy. He certainly wasn't on the phone. I mean in person, Missy. Some people even break out in hives when they have to meet somebody. You know that cousin of ours? Lord, it's 25 years since we've seen him. What was his name? You mean Casper? <laughs> How do you remember all those names? <laughs> What's her name? Brenda Barr. Brenda Ames everywhere but at the station. Mark the tag with both names so I don't forget them, will you? You got it. She was uh, hit with a candlestick. Where's the corner? No, on his way. Gotta think. Think. Can't panic. Gotta think. Relax. Make some make some soup. Can a coffee. No boss. I just relax. Put on my best coat for that bum. 
Lousy, stupid, fake. Phony, broad, and fake. Lousy, stinking trap. Take it slow. Slow and easy. Just think. Cops. Cool. Take your time. Stay cool. Stay loose. The fingerprints. Forgot to wipe the fingerprints. Have to get away. No. No, first. First I have to go back. I'll wipe off my fingerprints and then try. I can't be sure unless I go back. They found her. Can't clutch up. Can't blow my cool. Keep driving. Slow. Slow and easy. Found her. Get yourself in an uproar, Mr. Cutter. We really don't care why you went there. Do I answer that? If you think you can, safely. For crying out loud, Mr. Jonas, you're making this guy sound as guilty as sin. Stop with the cagey act, will you, and explain to your client that unless the coroner declares Brenda Bauer hit herself on the head with that candlestick five times, we've got a murder case here. He's not a prime suspect. His fingerprints don't match the prints on that candlestick. Now tell him to start talking to me and you stop dancing and maybe we can go home. I'm tired. Well, seems reasonable, but I must insist on protecting my client's best interests. Then go out and hire him a lawyer who knows what he's doing. Like I said, I don't care why you went there. I just want to know when you made the appointment and if she said anything to you at all about what she expected to be doing before she met you. Now, is that so hard to answer? Mother, as a matter of fact, we, we had a standing appointment uh, every Tuesday at 6.30. We never saw each other any other time or even talked on the phone. Just uh, every Tuesday night at former model, victim of bludgeon murder. That must be Shelby calling us. Hello. Shelby? Oh, no, it's you, Elizabeth. Yes, we just saw it. It, it, it does look like that girl we saw, yes. Um, well, we haven't read the story. Look, why don't you call Shelby, Elizabeth, and both come over here for brunch and we'll talk about it. No, we won't mind. Is there anything they can bring? Yes, some cream and a dozen croissants from Hooper's Bakery. Some cream and a dozen croissants from Hooper's Bakery. And hurry over now. I think we're all het up over nothing. 
The girl we saw in the cocktail lounge was much taller. That poor murdered girl is the very self-same girl we saw meet Malcolm Weston and leave with him. But are we sure the man we saw was Malcolm Weston? I agree with all of you. Blessed are the peacemakers, Missy. But there is no way to agree with everybody when everybody disagrees. What I agree about is we ought to find out. What? If the murdered girl was the girl we saw and if the man was Malcolm Weston. And how do you propose to do that? Pass the preserves. Huh? God, I'll find out if it was her. That's the phone. Come on, Rebecca. Going back to the Velvet Trap to find that little hostess was bad enough. But coming here to her home, Missy... Well, she wasn't there, was she? No, she wasn't. So we had no choice but to come here. I really think we should forget this whole business and go back home. Don't be an old poot. All we're doing is what any citizen should do when they have information that might assist the police. No, Sophie. A citizen goes to the police. She doesn't go marching around like a covey of Sherlock Holmes. You're mixing your tenses, dear. And giving 50 cents to that custodian at the cocktail bar to get the address of this hostess. I think 50 cents was too much. Suppose she's still asleep. It's almost 10 o'clock. Everybody's up by 10. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we all wound up in jail. I really wouldn't. I was arrested in the speakeasy during Prohibition. Shh. Let me do the talking. I'm sure no one could stop you if they tried, dear. Yes? Good morning. We were in the Velvet Trap last night. Do you remember? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isn't that the most adorable little baby? Yeah. <laughs> and we'd also like to know if you remember this young lady being in also last evening. It was about uh, 5.30. <laughs> That's Brenda. She's in every evening, nearly. <laughs> but she was in last evening, wasn't she? About 5.30. Yes, she was. And she left with a young man, didn't she? Uh, I think so, but I'm not really sure. Why do you ask? Did she do something? Then you haven't seen the paper. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but if you don't tip that bottle up a little when you're feeding it, she's oh. going to get bubbles in her little tummy. Oh, my eldest boy had the most terrible time with gas bubbles when he was bottle fed. He's an attorney now. Well, thank you so much, and we hope we haven't disturbed you too much. Come on, girls. Oh, you're going to break a lot of hearts when you grow up, you pretty little thing. <laughs> Stay cold. Get to the bank. Get my money out. <laughs> she thought she was too good to have one lousy drink of me. I can tell her off. Cop. Looking at me. It's lucky. Doesn't know who I am. Be cool. Keep walking to the bank. Get my money. It's mine. You really must have a screw loose, Sophie. The man might well be a murderer, and here you are walking up to his door to say, how do you do? All I propose we do is go in and knock on his door, and when he answers, we'll apologize for disturbing him and say we knocked on the wrong door. But he might have a gun. So... He uses candlesticks. But he still could have a gun. We'll never know if it was our Malcolm Weston until we see the real Malcolm Weston. I've never seen a murderer. Suzanne, honey, are you there? Suzanne, dear. It's Aunt Sophie. Sophie, T. Suzanne, dear. He isn't here. He left the water running. I've never in my whole life seen any place this messy. 
Shouldn't somebody do something about that faucet? Don't touch anything. Fingerprints. You ladies looking for somebody? Who, who might you be, sir? Name's Tubbs. I'm the building manager. And who might you be? I'm Mr. Weston's aunt from New Hampshire. He doesn't seem to be here. Do you have any identification to prove that, ma'am? Can't just let anybody into a man's apartment. Oh, we were just leaving. Yes, uh, excuse us, please. Who might I tell him was here? Oh, don't tell him we were here. We want to surprise him. Gotta know it wasn't you. Gotta know. Tell you how lousy you are. Just answer this phone and I'll tell you what you are. go to the police and tell them. Oh, but we're not sure that the man that poor girl left with was our Malcolm Weston. We could cause him a great deal of discomfort if it wasn't. The police are well equipped to deal with the matter. We're not. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, sissy? Tucked away with my library card where yours should be, thank you. Who wants tea? Sure did take off in a hurry, didn't he? What would you do if you'd just kill somebody? Pete, shut that one off, will you? Oh, yeah. All right. His license plate number's out already. We could get lucky. If he had any class, he'd give himself up. Well, there's a chance. He's got no prior arrests. Could be he has a conscience, huh? Sure he has. That's why he hit her five times. Panic, maybe. Possible? Pete, uh, what's the guy's name we're looking for? Malcolm Andrew Weston. It's the Malcolm. Now write it down for me. Will you? Yeah, I got it. Hey, just come to get you. Morning, Lieutenant. It's uh, Mr. Tubbs, building super, Lieutenant Helm. Mr. Tubbs was telling me earlier there were four older ladies over this morning looking for Mr. Weston. Yeah, one of them said she was his aunt from New Hampshire. Didn't sound it. Pure Pasadena, I'd say. If you'll go down to your apartment, Mr. Tubbs, Sergeant Lutz will have someone get a statement from you. Glad to oblige. Well, Lieutenant, what did Weston do? Parking tickets. Too many parking tickets. I didn't know they sent detectives with a search warrant after you for that. Get man down there right away, Mr. Tubbs. Have to be the same four that were over at the Velvet Trap this morning went to see that hostess after. Looks like they got a jump on us. Got everywhere before we did. Yep. You want me uh, to put out a pickup for them? Oh, yeah, sure. I can just see that. Cars and paddy wagons rolling in, loaded down to the gunnels with little old ladies. Terrific. Oh, check on tubs. to me. We realize 
because your son is an attorney, Shelby, but that doesn't mean you know all about the law. Now you're frightening Evelyn. Just hush. I'm simply pointing out that we could be arrested for withholding evidence. We did not withhold evidence. We just had our suspicions, and really, that's all we have now. Well, I hope we get a policeman who loves his mother. We will, dear. I just keep driving around. Maybe there's a pickup out in the car. I have to leave it. Can't risk going to the airport. Can't go to the train or bus. I have to wait until dark. Find some place to wait. All because of you. All because of you, Rebecca. Shelby had an adventure. Isn't that always the way? She'll be all right now. Sergeant Lutz was number one in his first aid class. Shelby is prone to swoon. Don't give it a thought. Are you feeling better, dear? That was a terrible man. What was it he said to you, ma'am? That, sir, will go to my deathbed with me. If he'd said it to Sophie T, she would have told. Sophie T? Oh. Well, now, which of you ladies is going to tell me why you came here? I'm Mrs. Curtis, and that's Mrs. Gibson, that's my sister, Mrs. Tryon, and uh, Mrs. Saunders is the lady that fainted. Pleased to meet you, ladies. We were told that you are in charge of the murder investigation of Miss Brenda Bauer. Yes, ma'am. We saw her at the Velvet Trap cocktail lounge just before it happened. Did you ladies happen to go by that establishment, say, about ten this morning? Yes, we did. You must be a very good detective. We also visited the hostess that works there just to make certain that the murdered girl was the one we saw. Where else did you ladies go? He knows we went somewhere else. I was just inquiring if you did, ma'am. Suppose we did. Suppose we thought we knew who that poor girl left the cocktail lounge with, but we couldn't be certain. Should we tell you who we thought it was? We wouldn't want to cause any difficulty for someone who was perfectly innocent. As it happens, ma'am, we knew you went there. What I'd like to know is how you ladies knew to go there. Did one of you know Mr. Weston from somewhere? Yes and no. 
You see, we made up a lady, and we named her Rebecca Mead, after an aunt of Mrs. Tryon's and mine. Why did you make her up? Well, we surely couldn't have put down one of our own names. Well, look, maybe we'd better start from... No. Pete, get a stano in here to take this all down. We'll want an official record. Right. Thank you for the smelling salts, officer. Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. This is going to sound silly to you, I'm sure. No, it won't. Go on. The name of the computer company was Scientific Associates, if that matters. Could be very important, thank you. You're welcome. We didn't want phone calls, so we said that Rebecca didn't have a phone, and we asked the young man to write. Three of them wrote. One was a smart aleck. Malcolm was very inventive. He looked up the address, found Sophie T's last name, and then looked it up in the phone book, I suppose. I was really impressed. I'm sure. <sighs> I'm feeling so much better now. All right. All right, I'll show you too good. You're gonna pay off. Make me trouble. All right. Well, I think we've got it all straight to there. Then what? That's all. We had his address, so we went over there to get a look at him, but he wasn't home. Do you ladies realize how lucky you are that he wasn't home? We would simply have told that him. That you were looking for somebody else. But suppose he had remembered seeing you in the bar, hmm? You don't think we did the right thing? No, ma'am. It was very dangerous. I told her it was dangerous. Oh, don't cop out, Evelyn. We all went right along with the whole thing. You ladies were very lucky. Now, I hope we can rely on your cooperation. You... You'd like us to mind our own business. I wouldn't put it quite that way, ma'am, but yes, I would. Then we will. I'd really appreciate that. May I ask how you located Mr. Weston? His fingerprints through the FBI. I think that was very enterprising. Would you like me to find out what that man said to Mrs. Saunders? We know that character, ma'am. We can guess what he said. What was it? Probably. I really don't think you'd like to hear that. Oh, yes, I would. I'm more than glad that this morning is over. Wasn't that Detective Hallam nice? It would be a pleasure to be arrested by him. <laughs> Put our house under surveillance. An unmarked police car just pulled up across the street in case anybody's interested. Doesn't look like a police car to me. Nor to me either. I know the fuzz when I see the fuzz. It won't matter if I swear on a stack of files. Leon is never going to believe this. Well, he certainly won't believe it unless you tell somebody what the man said to you when you fainted. And then 
they can bear you out. Now, it doesn't matter how you try to get around me, Sophie. I'm not going to tell. There's some things a lady never, ever repeats. If he'd said it to me, I'd have told. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Oh, I have to go up and get out of these shoes before I strangle. Now, don't try to con me. Where is she? We know who you are, so you might just as well pack up and take yourself away from here, Mr. Weston. I said, where is she? He wants to see Rebecca. Now, don't dance me. Where is she? I think we should phone that Mr. Hallam, Sophie T. No, 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 you're not phoning anybody. Now, where is she? Young man, this will come as a shock, I'm certain. But there is no Rebecca Mead. That's right. Don't give me any of that garbage. There never was a Rebecca Mead. Not lately, anyhow. Rebecca Mead was our aunt. And she's gone to her reward years and years ago. So there's no reason for you to be here at all. Now you listen. So And you're frightening Shelby. Mrs. Saunders. I'll do more than that. She happens to be the mother of an attorney at law. Shut up! That's very rude, you know. You just shut up and tell me where that lousy tramp is. We've told you. Now, look, I talked to Rebecca Mead. No, no, you, you talked to Sophie T. She just said she was Rebecca Mead. Oh, Evelyn, I think you better take Shelby and Elizabeth home. There's no point in all of us. No. No, no. Nobody's going anywhere. Now, we're, we're all going to stay here until she gets here. Now, now, you just go over there and sit down. Come on, all of you. Move. Move. Move, move, move! One moment. Now! Not there, there. I explained to you that Rebecca Mead went to her reward years and years ago. Wasn't her I killed. He's confessing. Sit. Now look. Either you tell me where that tramp is or I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the bunch of you. Why would you do a thing like that? That doesn't make sense. I don't think he's quite well, Sophie T. What do you mean by that, lady? She meant nothing at all. Please try to control yourself, Mr. Weston. Don't Mr. Weston me. Now, I'm going to find out where Rebecca is or I'm going to beat it out of you. Oh, you wouldn't do that. I think he would. Yes, I would. He's killed once, Sophie T. He has nothing to lose. That's right. Nothing to lose. Then neither have we. If you intend to kill us, we have nothing to lose in trying to stop you. And if you think that we're going to sit quietly by while you take your candlestick to us one by one, you have another think coming, Mr. Weston. Who we'll do what I tell you? Why should we? Where is she? If he comes too near, take your hat pin out, stick him with it. You think you're doing, lady? I'll get my rat tail comb. It's aluminum. You get something to protect yourself, Evelyn. The, 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 the scissors on the desk. What? And get something heavy for what? me. The paperweight would just be fine. <gasps> Are you about finished with this game, lady? Pay him no mind, girls. You're going to pay me a lot of mind. You're going to tell me where that broad is. You don't know the nightmare she put me through. And if the only way to pay her back is to kill every one of you, that's what I'm going to do. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand that any violent action on your part might bring about some rather painful injuries? Please, try to understand. There is no Rebecca Mead. We made her up. There never was. Really. Never. You... You're a fool! Police! They're right outside. Sophie saw them! I'd rather you hadn't told him that, dear.
And then we all jumped on him. Well, uh, the uh, district attorney may... He'll probably want to speak to you, ladies, and... Well, thank you very much for your assistance. Oh, you're most welcome, Mr. Hallam. Now, I think we'd better be going, unless there's something else. Oh, no. There's nothing else. Bye. Thanks again for the smelling salts, Officer Lutz. How'd they do it? I don't know. I mean, he really could have killed them all. Even without a gun. He could have done them all in. He could have. He's not a pro. He killed that Bauer girl in a panic. In a fit of passion. Maybe he didn't get panicky or passionate. business has satisfied your hunger for adventure, Missy. Of course, dear. For what? Don't encourage her, Elizabeth. She doesn't need prompting. It's hard to believe we really captured a murderer. Am I the only one who realizes that we came within inches of being killed? I think we were much closer than that. So do I. Much more. It's only four o'clock. What do we do now? I don't know about you girls, but I'm famished. I could eat a little something. It's almost cocktail time. Isn't there a nice little place just around the corner? We'll go find one. Your shoe's still bothering you, dear? Truth to tell, I forgot all about it. We could drive if you want. No, the walk will do us good. It certainly has been one hell of a day, hasn't it, girls? <laughs>